Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about Apple stock. Uh, this one sort of piques my interest right now because I don't think uh, I can even remember a time when Apple stock had so many bearish headlines for the uh, stock in general. So I thought it'd be an interesting one to look at. As always, we'll be using Seeking Alpha Premium to go through and dissect Apple stock. Uh, if you are interested in this platform and supporting my channel, there's a great offer for you down there in the description. It includes a seven-day free trial. So that's a great opportunity to go through the platform and check it out for yourself while getting a great price at the same time. All right, so looking at some of these headlines, I was talking about the negative headlines uh, that we're seeing right now. And, you know, one of the big ones that is always going to be uh, analyzed is anytime Warren Buffett sells something, and he has been selling Apple stock, at least uh, from a Berkshire perspective, and, uh, you know, 67% of their holding has been uh, sold. So you got the negativity with the Warren Buffett selling, and I think the other thing that's going on right now with Apple is just the world of technology is moving so fast with AI, and they have yet to introduce an AI-related product really of any kind. Like so many other AI applications, we don't really know what it means for the bottom line from a business standpoint. Um, if I had to speculate on Apple and AI, uh, I would say that they would probably tie it very strongly to a product release of some kind uh, to boost sales. So for example, maybe the next iPhone will have AI, but the previous versions won't. So it does have some intrigue if they were to do something like that. Uh, and depending on consumer demand, you could sell a lot of phones um, by making the new one uh, integrate with AI. But so far, there really just hasn't been that many updates with it. And anytime the world is moving quickly and everybody and their mom's releasing AI things and you're not, investors are going to take notice. All right, next up on the negative headline front, I would say a combination of, uh, you know, the Donald Trump election, as well as how does that tie into China? Because uh, in the past, that's, you know, Trump and China sort of been an up and down relationship. A lot of technology companies, especially worldwide uh, ones, can see Trump as a bit of an enemy, particularly when you start thinking about tariffs, if that were to ever happen, uh, not to mention global relations, etc., because Donald Trump is, is really focused on building up the United States. Anyone who does a hefty chunk of business outside the United States uh, probably sees Trump as an enemy. And when you're looking at it from an investor standpoint and you know how much the China market means uh, to Apple, well, you have to have some second guesses there. It definitely makes sense that it would give investors pause to think about what does the Trump presidency mean with China relations and how does that circle back to one of Apple's biggest markets. So that would be a negative headwind, at least until we hear more details. All right, and then finally, from a negative standpoint, if we talk about Apple's valuation, it is running slightly hotter uh, than it has over you know, the past several years. And if we go to the Seeking Alpha valuation uh, metrics page, we can see the, uh, let's focus on gap here, the PE gap trailing 12 months, currently 3781. Uh, the five-year average is 2926. Okay, so it's definitely running hot there. I focus more on forward. Granted, that does include projections, so it's not as stable as the past. Um, but gap forward at 31, it is slightly higher than the five-year average by about 11%. Um, so I did some quick math for you uh, in relation to this price of $230. And if we were going to go on trailing 12 months gap, uh, you know, right now it's at 37.81, the EPS for the last fiscal year for Apple was $6.75. So if we took 6.75, times 3781, that gets you real close to this number here of 230. Now, if we take the 675, which is a constant, and we go by the five-year average and just multiply it by 29 is what I did, 
you get a stock price of $195 and some change. So with that in mind, just picking that one average point to calculate, you know, you have a stock that is, I guess, 10, 15% off the top of my head uh, that you could argue overvalued based on past valuation metrics. Now, if we look only forward, again, you got this number 3111, the forward consensus projection is $7.39, okay? And we're just have, you know, that's gonna change all next year, but let's just take it for what it's worth today. 739 by 31, 739 multiplied by 31, again, gets you really close to this number, okay? 739 by the average, which I put in as 28, 739 by 28 puts this number at 206, all right? So if you're looking forward like the market does, now you're gonna say uh, it's much closer to 10%, right? 10% overvalued, uh, give or take, because if you drop off $23 from the 230, you know, that puts you right in line with the 206 number that I came up with. So the whole point of, of that math uh, was that, is Apple overvalued perhaps? Uh, what does overvalued mean when you turn it into dollars? And I would say that uh, over the next, you know, couple of months, if Apple got closer to $206, you know, some people would think that that's a, a huge meltdown. Um, I don't really see it that way. But if it did get closer to $206, it would be right in line with the five-year average. Right now, we're in a boom of speculation uh, with, with the presidency changing and such. Uh, there's a lot of it in the market. I don't think it's just uh, an Apple phase. But if you're right down at 206, I think most people could stomach buying it again. And if you got closer to 200, probably start to argue that it's a deal. All right, now I'm gonna flip the script and talk about some positives. Since all the headlines are negative, it, it's probably more contrarian to think of some of the positives uh, with Apple right now. So thinking about positive headlines, uh, you know, one, I think, even though we talked about the ding of AI in the scale and the scope of technology, if you will, um, but the chip, uh, the chip production that Apple has basically in-house now, obviously it's done um, by, by a third party manufactured at TSM, but what you do have is a company that formerly bought chips from other people and decided to put some smart people on it and they've developed new chips that are actually better and faster than most of everything that's on the market right now. So if you're able to do that, you, you obviously are lowering costs, uh, but then you're starting to build up the IP of the company far beyond to even what it is today, because uh, what if one day Apple turns around and sells their chips to somebody else? Uh, that would be interesting. I can't imagine that would be Samsung or anything like that, but it's hard to tell where this chip technology will end, and that could very well carry over to the AI space, right? They found success in making their own chip technology. How can they use that? How can they partner that with AI technology to make something, again, that nobody necessarily has? Everybody has a version but how does Apple's version of AI uh, compute faster or think better than everybody else's? If you nail those things absolutely perfectly, then obviously you, you have the next version of iPhone in the sense that you have the next, you know, premier product line. Great, in this case, it would be, you know, AI technology, but you have the next premier product line and that could be huge for profits. Okay, the next thing that's a positive headline, in my opinion, and, it, and it's as long as I've looked at Apple stock and made my own little sort of napkin math calculations, the one place that I've always been wrong is underestimating the buybacks of the stock. So if you think back on the, the napkin math I just did on the uh, $206, which would be you know the projected EPS times the five-year average forward PE, um, where that gets screwed up every time is when you forget to factor in how many shares Apple buys back each year. It makes the calculation very hard to project, and it's usually an error, a conservative error, uh, let's say on my part, right? So I think it's going to be this, 
And then what happens is it, it's much more in Apple's favor. And some of that has to do with the share buyback program. And I'm just gonna highlight this on the Seeking Alpha Financials page. Um, this is, if you can see at the top, this is September, 2019. Okay, you had 69, um, what would that be? $69 billion in repurchases of common stock, dollars, not shares. And then you go to 2020, you're at 75. 2021, 92. 2022, 95. Actually had a dip back here in 23, at least on the pace, the pace that they were expanding. And then this year's fiscal year ended up over $100 billion in share buybacks, which is absolutely insane. That's like 400 smaller companies built into just stock buybacks. And you can see here, um, if I highlight this, this is uh, shares outstanding. Okay, so again, 2019, you know, you were over 18 uh, billion shares and that number, this is trailing 12 months. That's why it aligns perfectly with September of 2024 because uh, they just ended their fiscal year. So 18.5 billion has been reduced to 15.4 billion shares. Apple is the absolute master of stock buybacks. Um, I don't know their rationale behind it every time, but it always gets approved by the board. They've been doing it forever, and it is something to keep in mind. It's not going to make the stock go to the moon, but in terms of preserving equity for the shareholders and uh, share price in general, it is a magic formula that has worked for a very long time. All right, one more potential win for Apple that I'm gonna call out that hasn't been talked about much. Uh, credit to the Steven Fiorillo, if that's correct, uh, analyst here on Seeking Alpha. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom, but he brings up a couple points. The bigger part of the article, he's talking about, you know, people haven't um, associated with Apple with a winner after the Trump uh, election results. But then he brings this up, Republicans will come into 2025 controlling all three legislative branches, which will make passing uh, President Trump's policies much easier. I think that Apple will be a beneficiary of better business environment when companies are likely to expand and a tax policy that may be become extremely favorable. And he actually puts a number on it, which I like. He does some math earlier in this article but um, Apple could shave more than $10 billion off of its tax bill on an annual basis if corporate taxes go to 15%. I think that shares of Apple are attractively valued and 2025 could be a big year as the services uh, portion of their revenue surpass $100 billion run rate, upgrade cycles heat up and new economic policies are passed. So. Speculation there, just like you know everybody else who's speculating the downfall. This is speculating uh, things aren't as bad. I personally will agree that the shares are likely overvalued uh, right now, uh, certainly compared to five-year average, but it's not um, colossal. It's not a 10x kind of thing where they crash. Um, if, if Apple went to $200 uh, over the next two months, I don't think I would really even raise my eyebrows. I would just say sort of back to par. But then some of the other things that we don't yet know could really change the trajectory from where they're stuck in the mud today. Um, but then you bring in, what does the AI mean? What does continuing to produce their chips mean in the long run? What if AI and the chips come together? What if corporate tax rate goes to 15%? What if the buybacks continue at a bigger pace next year than they were at this year? So the bottom line, I guess, for this video is there's a lot of negativity out there uh, for Apple right now. And, um, but it's hard for me to say that selling is the best course of action. Um, I think the bigger play is to wait and see uh, over the next few months. And if you do get closer to that $200, uh, per share. I think, you know, how do you not build some of that into your existing position? And if you don't have Apple shares at all, 
but you've been thinking about it, or let's say it does go to $200, maybe you think about something like the QQQ, which has a heavy percentage of Apple stock, and it will take out the risk of you own, owning Apple stock individually. Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to check out that Seeking Alpha offer that's in the description. Potentially support my channel at the same time. Get yourself a seven day free trial of the platform. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about Apple stock coming up over the next three or four months. Hope everybody's well. We'll see you on the next video.